In this episode, we will be talking about fake protected variables. But first, let's go ahead and talk about private variables. So what exactly is a private variable? A private variable is a variable that is only visible to the class they belong to. A private variable is protected from outside access. In most programming languages, to declare a private variable, you would use the private keyword. However, in Godot GDScript, there is no way to declare a private variable. The private keyword, or any keyword, or any type of functionality is not provided by GDScript in order to declare private variables. Now, private variables have three behaviors. The first is that private variables can't be seen inside classes that inherit the class containing a private variable. The second behavior is that private variables cannot be edited outside of its containing class, and that includes subclasses. Finally, private variables can only be edited inside its containing class. This behavior we can, in fact, mimic in GDScript. In GDScript, we can find ourselves being able to mimic a protected variable, and that's because protected variables have two behaviors. The first behavior is that protected variables are visible only to the class to which they belong to and any subclasses. Keep in mind that in GDScript, when we make our fake protected variable, our protected variable will be seen in the Godot editor for autocomplete. However, that is not a problem. Next, the second behavior is that our protected variable cannot be accessed or edited by outside values. This is another behavior we can mimic in GDScript. However, we can't actually go ahead and create a protected variable. In most programming languages, to create a protected variable, you would use the protected keyword or another keyword that basically allows for this behavior for your variable. However, GDScript allows us with a different type of functionality to mimic this behavior, and that is the setGet keyword. Now, there are three things we need to do. The first is our naming convention. So one, when declaring a fake protected variable, use the underscore symbol as the first character in your variable. This will make it a little harder to get autocomplete to suggest your fake protected variable for you. Also, this is a common way to do private variables in Python and JavaScript. Now, next, the second Second thing we want to do is declare our variable with the set get keyword. Now keep this in mind. You need to declare both a setter and getter method. Do not omit anything. And lastly, make sure that in our setter and getter methods, we print a string. You can choose what you print. However, it's best to print out something to console for both the setter and getter methods. This makes sure that if we accidentally access our fake protected variables outside of the class, we will be able to see in the console that we've accessed our protected variable. One last thing, make sure you don't return anything in your getter function. By omitting the return keyword, we will by default return a value no. And in our setter method, make sure you don't actually assign a value to your protected variable or your fake protected variable. Now to access a protected variable from within your class, you would simply access it like you would a normal variable. One thing to note is if you use the self keyword, you will in fact go through your setter and getter methods. So do not use the self keyword. By doing this, we've basically encapsulated our variable to only being usable inside the current class. So to go ahead and create a fake protected variable, simply use the var keyword followed by the underscore symbol, followed by a name for the variable you want to protect, then use the set get keyword followed by the setter function and the getter function, making sure you actually declare your functions in the class. In this case, our getter function will just print out to console, can't access protected variable, and our useless setter will just print out to console, can't access protected variable, keeping in mind that your setter function still needs to accept a single argument. You can also not do anything. You can just use the pass keyword, which basically just means we're not going to throw an error that our functions are empty. In this case, when we access our getter function, even though we use the pass keyword, we're still going to return null by default. And when using the pass keyword in our setter method, we're not actually going to do anything with this setter method. However, I recommend you don't do this because it's harder to debug just because one, the setter method will do nothing. It won't actually throw an error if you accidentally try to access a fake protected variable. But second, our useless get 
get function, or rather our getter function, will in fact return no. And so when debugging, you may not know where you got your no value from. So again, it's best to print something to screen just so when you're debugging, you can see in the console if you accidentally try to access a fake protected variable from outside its class. Now let's go ahead and see some coding examples. As you can see here, I have the animal class. I use the class name keyword followed by the name animals. Now we have access to this class by using the animal keyword. I went ahead and created our protected variable. Again, the underscore symbol. I went ahead and declared it with a data type string just so we stay within strings. I gave it a default value and I used the set get keyword followed by the name of our setter and the name of our getter methods. I went ahead and created the setter function and notice how it doesn't do anything, it just prints. Of course, keep in mind that we have to pass in one argument. I also created our getter function, again with the print keyword. It doesn't do anything. Notice how our getter method does not return a value. Notice how our setter method does not actually pass a value down to our variable that we're trying to protect. But one thing I wanna show you is that we still have access to our protected variable inside the class. Take a look at this. So you can see here to access and change our values, simply use your variable. It's as simple as that. And also notice how we don't have the self keyword. If you use the self keyword, we're going to go ahead and end up accessing our protected set and our protected get functions, which we do not want to do inside our animal class. Now I went ahead and created a, another class called the frog class, gave it the class name frog so we can access it. We don't need this for the example. However, now I want to show you that we have access to a method and notice how even though we did not declare our variable inside our frog class, we still have access to it because we're inheriting from the animal class. Basically the animal class or the animals class is our super class and our frog class is our subclass. Notice how I can change our protected variable inside our subclass and notice how I can print out the value. I can basically access it. As long as we don't use the self keyword, we're not going to access our setter and getter methods when we use our variable inside our class. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of actually using our class objects now that they have protected or rather fake protected variables. So I went ahead and created a variable with the animal name. We're instantiating the animals class with the new method. I'm doing the same thing with the frog class and passing that new instantiated class into our frog variable. And here's where it gets interesting. Notice how I try to set a new value to our protected variable. And actually what happens is instead of changing the value of protected variable, instead what we're going to do is we're going to go through the setter method and we're gonna go ahead and print a console that there's an error we cannot access protected variables. Now to show in console what we're doing, I go ahead and I try to get our protected variable. So by trying to access our protected variable from the animal object, what we're going to do instead is end up going through the getter method and the getter method for one prints to the screen. So we're going to print first, error cannot access protected variable. And then because we're not returning a value by default, the no value is returned instead. And because I have the print keyword here, we're going to print out no to the console. I went ahead and called our change value method in our animal class object. And we will in fact change the variable to something else. Now in the animal class, as you can see here, we declared our variable with the default value protected variable. And in our change value method, we went ahead and we just simply created, or rather we passed a new value, a new string value with the words value changed inside class. And of course, I added a print method to see it in console that we have in fact changed the value of our protected variable. So as you can see here, we do have access to methods, but we do not have access to our protected variable, or rather we gave our protected variable a behavior that's similar to a protected variable. And of course we did the same thing with the frog class. In this case the frog class changes its value, its protected variable value to that of inside frog. And we go ahead and print out to the frog class. Keep in mind that in order to change your protected variable inside its own class we need to again not use the self keyword. We need to omit that. If you use the self keyword we will go ahead and call the setter or getter methods for that variable. Again, a fake protected variable is good when you 
want to mimic the behavior of variable encapsulation. Basically, you want to reduce the ability of outside classes from accessing and using your member class variables. Now, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for clicking the like button. I'm going to go ahead and upload this to GitHub, so feel free to download and play around with fake protected variables. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.